What's up guys? Welcome to this week's video. I'm trying to upload videos weekly. Still takes me a lot of time. Still kind of holding stuff up, I think, because trying to get the video edited and then work on the car and, and not fall behind on the videos because I know as soon as that starts happening, I'm gonna completely stop doing them. But now we're gonna actually start getting into the nitty gritty, working on the sedan, kind of getting more into detail on the build because I know that's what you guys are more interested in. You guys don't really care about my life. I um, care about the cars I build, so. Got the car in the garage, as you can see. I got them kind of side by side, so I have plenty of space to work with. So I can take stuff off the EG when it's time and then transfer it over directly to the sedan. But before any of the part swapping occurs, there is a ton of fab work I gotta do to this car. First, which is probably gonna be the tubs. Took apart the whole front end, fenders, hood, bumper, all the wire. Y harness, took that out, the brake lines, I'm not gonna need that. So I got a lot of space to work with here. Not really sure where to start. I think I'm gonna start on the passenger side because I know I have a lot of room here. Whatever I learn from that, I'll apply it to this side and go from there. But I do know it's not gonna be easy, but I'm here to learn and then hopefully teach you guys how to do it. So wish me luck. So some of you guys might be wondering why I'm doing the tubs. With the 15s that I ran on this car, you can see up there, and over here, the wheel was contacting that upper shock tower quite a bit. So when it would bottom out, it would hit pretty bad there and there. With this car, I do wanna run 17s, which means a significantly taller tire diameter, um, almost two inches taller to be exact. So these locations here are gonna be a major problem when I wanna run the bigger tire. So what I'm essentially gonna do is I'm gonna cut all of this out, all of that out, and use these trailer fenders, AKA tubs, and I'm gonna re-weld new metal to create a lot more clearance for those tires, which means I can run a bigger tire, run it as low as I want, and not have tire clearance issues. So what I'm gonna essentially just do is I'm gonna cut all of this out and try to follow this frame rail, cut that out too, and then just kind of build a section off of here. And then the same thing on the back side. I'm gonna cut all of this out over here and then do tubs. I'm not 100% sure if I need to get into the firewall just yet. Um, I do know back here, this is a very strong section. So as you can kind of see, that's gonna basically go right into that double thick metal right there. The driver's side, um, that's gonna be a little bit more work because we have this engine mount here. So I've been working with Hasport. We're gonna get some custom mounts made for this chassis. And I think this mount is gonna be in the way significantly because as you can see, I'm gonna go about there. So if we look here, the tubs are realistically gonna be in the way of this engine mount. And you can kind of see right here, that's a problem. This little, this little bump right here, that is essentially right here. So I was thinking I can either kind of cut this mount here and then tub everything over but I'm still gonna have this problem down here. Talking with Hasport guys, I think I'm gonna get rid of this entire mount and then use an EK style mount, which kind of bolts to the frame rail and the mount sits a little bit further into the engine bay. With the EK mount, we should have significantly more clearance with the tubs on this side. My plan of attack, um, I got this sweet tool. It's a little center punch. So it creates a little indent. So what I'm gonna do with this mount, I already, made a bunch of indents so I can use my spot drill bit and uh, get this out. So kind of just an example. Pretty cool tool, got it on Amazon Prime. I'm gonna try to share with you guys the tools that I'm using as well. I mean, I got a bunch of stuff from Amazon Prime here today. Just kind of getting ready to do some cutting, welding, stuff like that. I've been talking long enough Let's maybe do a time lapse of me getting rid of this mount right here. Easy. And it's out, mostly in one piece as well. So the trick is to make sure you don't 
use a spot well too deep. But it won't really matter here because I'm cutting all this out. But I was mainly trying to be careful on the frame rail. I didn't want to cut into the frame rail too much. But yeah, that came out perfect. So this dent right here, that is the concern. So now I have all this room to do the tubs without that engine mount in the way. But it's pretty cool that I could kind of save this in one piece. So if my decision to use the EK mount was a dumb idea, I could always just weld that back on there. Shouldn't be a problem. But if you're curious about what tool I used, it's just a spot weld drill bit. And it's pretty cool because you basically make a pilot hole and then it has this little spring activated guy in the middle. So it kind of keeps you guided. And then you just, yep, you just drill out the spot weld. So this is what I used, spot weld cutter kit. And yeah, just, I mean, everything you can get on Amazon Prime these days. So that's done. Awesome. The main question I have right now is how high do I want the tubs to be? I originally was gonna to try to make them flush here so they would basically start there and then come down. But looking at these spot welds, there's a lot of structure that is going on here. The spot welds are like right here and you can kind of see there's a thick metal here that kind of surrounds this shock tower. So it's like a two piece. So if I were to put the tubs up to this point here, I would have to basically cut all of this out. So I'm thinking I can probably get away with running the tubs to this point, which would be right below these spot welds, which would give me about an inch here and then continuing down there. Let's start cutting. Okay, got a little bit of it cut out and I ended up going above the spot welds because right here where I cut is pretty much where those two thick pieces of metal meet up. This is the thick metal that makes most of the strength of the shock tower and this here is just super thin stuff. That's essentially where my tub is gonna start. You kind of see from here, it's a little angled which I think is gonna be perfect because I'm gonna Instead of the tub being flat across, I'm gonna angle it to the shock tower. Cause when you think about it, when the tire is gonna come up, the tire is gonna camber up into here and you already have like three to four degrees of camber. So the higher the tire goes, the more clearance issues you're gonna have up here. So I'm gonna run the tub slightly angled up. So it also means I'm gonna to have to cut a significant portion of this guy out as well, which this is also a decent amount of stiffness, but I'm not really worried about stiffness because once I get the cage, I am gonna tie the cage into these shock towers. So I'm gonna do a bar that's gonna go forward to the back side of here. And then I'm gonna do a bar that's gonna go across to the middle of the dash bar and then probably make a custom strut bar that ties these two together. So let's, uh, let's keep working. Oh, that's a pretty cool shot, look at that. Hybrid racing. Started getting a little carried away with the grinder there. Um, yeah, if you're wondering why I don't have a shield on this guy, um, I like to live life on the edge. <laughs> um, I do not recommend it. Do not try this at home. Always run a shield because it's super dangerous. Um, but hey, at least I got my safety glasses on. So yeah, pretty happy about the current progress. And you can see, look how much extra room there is. I mean, this guy used to be a 
been kind of dreading this, but honestly, man, it's pretty fun cutting up a chassis. So let's keep working. All right, progress continues. Um, first of all, I did bolt up the strut bar just to make sure that the strut towers stay in place because I did cut out a significant portion of the rear. This side, I cut it out from the top as you guys saw, but since it was kind of impossible to get the grinder in there, I basically just cut this from the bottom. So I went here, I went up, up, and then I just kind of followed those two sheet metal connection points, which is right there. And then just kind of ground this down to fit. And yeah, it's looking pretty good. Okay, <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> Woo. that was a lot of cutting and grinding and I didn't record most of it because um, that was like two hours of work and it was pretty miserable and I didn't want to put you guys through that. But here's what we have so far. So let's take a closer look. Got it all shaped out. Um, a little separated here, but that's okay because I'm going to trim the piece, weld it here on this side, and then weld it again over here. So that should be okay. I'm not too worried about that. And obviously the roll cage is going to do most of the supporting for the shock tower. We got our angle down, kind of see how it worked out a little bit. Still not perfect. Got a little bit of more finessing to do, but back here it got a little tricky because this arch of the trailer fender, it kind of continues to go this way and I'm not gonna go into this yet. I don't think I need to. I kind of shape the fender to kind of pocket into there and then I'll weld it and then I'll close this gap up obviously. But you can kind of see how it, how it came out. So I still need to cut out this middle section, obviously, around the shock tower. But the whole thing should essentially be one big piece that's going to weld all of this structure kind of together and get some of our strength back. But yeah. Safety first, guys. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. So I made the decision to cut the tub in sections just because it was easier to work with it as a front section and rear section. And then obviously I'm gonna tie it together in this area. The front fits up pretty damn good. I got it pretty much to the frame rail down here. Yeah, the seams are looking not too shabby and I'll, I'll probably trim this here once it's welded up and finalized, but yeah. A lot of freaking work to make this fit right. And then I'll probably have like a little closeout panel. I'll probably cut this out, make my own piece that kind of covers this whole section. And then obviously still make this guy down here, but yeah. Not bad. I kind of like the camber to it. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Now we're going to work on the rear section back here, which 
isn't ideal because our angle is a little off, but I'll make it work. Progress continues, slow and steady though. Got the rear mostly mocked up. Yeah, this one was pretty tricky because my arches or my trailer fenders were a little larger radius. It kind of overshoots this, but it's gonna make my life a little bit easier on this side because it's it's tight against here and then I'll just create a closeout panel right around here. So not the worst situation. And then I'll weld all of this and then weld it over here. So. That's the rear and that's the front. Let's take a look from the other side, see how it looks. That's pretty sick. See how much extra room we got. What's next? This part was also kind of tricky because you can see how I cut the frame because I don't want to go too far back. So I had to kind of cut a slot right here. So half of it goes there and then this other half kind of just folds around this edge. So I'll you know, weld it all around there, close that off. Gonna have to make my trim line here to there and then create a piece to close this whole thing out. I was kind of hoping to do it all in one piece, but it was a little harder than I thought. <laughs> a little bit more work, would have required a lot more grinding and cutting. It's kind of hard to tell, but not only are they leading in like that, this one's kind of angled in this way and this one's angled in that way. Just because when the tire's turning, I wanted to get these tubs as close to the frame rail as possible. So I think I achieved that on the front. A lot of freaking work. I just want to weld these guys in and call it a day. Got this piece. I got it all trimmed out by the shock tower area. I tacked it back in and then I'm making this last piece right here which is going to connect these two tubs and then I should be able to take this whole thing out, weld this nice, put a little bit more structure in the top and call it a day.
That is a huge arch. Woo! That looks so freaking good. Ugh. Anyway, so I'm probably gonna break this video up into two parts. You know, I'll probably do um, building front tubs, part one, um, and then do the second episode after, which is essentially gonna be all the finishing work. Cause, man, I still have a lot of work to do, even on this side. I mean, it's mostly mocked up, but I have to do a lot of welding and obviously finish off the sides and, you know, make it look pretty. So, I think we're going to end this video here, which is essentially the first part of making the tubs. And then the part two, which hopefully will come out a week after this video comes out, will be hopefully me finishing the tubs. Yeah, it's just a lot of work, um, but it is a fun project. I really enjoy doing this stuff. I like making things look good, so put a lot of time and energy into it. But anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, most of the videos from now on are going to be just like this, where it's me actually doing the work on the car and trying to teach you guys how to do it. So hopefully they're informative. Hopefully you guys enjoy them. Hopefully they're entertaining. And if you guys have any questions, please let me know. And any recommendations as always, also let me know because constantly trying to prove this. But you guys have been awesome so far. The comments are awesome, really supportive. And I appreciate all you guys watching the videos liking, subscribing, commenting, all that stuff. Appreciate it. So anyway, leave you guys with this.